OK, hello. Um, <coughs> um, I'm, my name is Toshiyuki Kimasui from Keio University, Japan. And I have my um, site, masui.org. And I have an email, masui.org. It's quite simple. And my Twitter account is masui also. Everybody can please remember my name. And um, I have put the password of Twitter here. So the Twitter, uh, the, um, the password of Twitter can be created by using my system, Episopus. So you can see that um, some <coughs> password like stuff is generated from the um, answering these questions from this seed word. And this is a real one. So you can actually get my password if you know all the answers for these questions. And the, today's slide is put on my site, masui.org slash p. So please, um, if you have a, um, access to internet, then please uh, see this one, and you can uh, easily access to other pages. So I'd like to begin my um, presentation by giving you the, showing you the demo. So this is how the EPSPAS system works. And I have prepared these pages for uh, showing how it works. So in this case, all the questions are written in English. So I have a bunch of questions like these, which are my, based on my secret episodic memories. So for example, who was the dirty, rude guy? Can you answer this? I guess not. And um, maybe somebody can um, check my grandma's f old phone number, but maybe nobody can say, see um, who beat me when I was young, or um, maybe you don't know who this is. Um, when I was an uh, elementary school student, somebody always talking about, I want to go to this university, and then uh, somebody might remember that, but almost nobody remembers that, remembers that. So I prepared these kind of very secret, episodic memories, and um, there's a one correct answer in these um, fake answers. And if I select right ones like this, then this uh, seed string like this is converted to this. So for example, if the seed is like this, and I select something like this, then the password is generated by the selection pattern of these answers. So, if, um, so apparently this is on the web, so everybody can see it, but nobody knows the right answer. And um, the, uh, maybe I am the only person who knows all the right correct answers, so I am quite confident that nobody can um, correctly um, get my password. Okay, this is the basic idea, and actually that's all. So I can stop the presentation right now, but uh, I will explain a little bit uh, more about this. So um, um, again, the, um, my password is here, that is, I am, st um, this is my Facebook page, and the password for the Facebook is this one. So there are many questions, and then if you answer all the right questions, then um, you can get my password, okay? So um, everybody um, here knows that there are a tremendous number of password-based uh, services, and they will not die out shortly, so we have to live with passwords, but, um, of course, everybody knows the um, problems of passwords, but um, the biggest problem for me for handling passwords is that I cannot remember passwords myself. So I have to use some extra techniques for handling, managing my passwords. By the way, um, because there aren't many Asian people here, so I'd like to um, ask you about um, how Asian people use passwords. Do you know about that? Uh, actually, the answer is that nobody is using uh, Chinese or Japanese characters. They only use alphabetic ca characters or numbers. So there's no problem about the language differences, okay? But uh, it's actually not very good for uh, people, uh, young people or very old people, because uh, small kids don't, can't read alphabet, or old people cannot um, think about um, very complicated alphabet um, character for passwords. So maybe um, that's not a very good case. So um, Maybe a Japanese character should be used for IDs and passwords, but currently it is not. So, 
But um, in some applications, um, this kind of Japanese <coughs> keyboards are available. So maybe for some people, this might be better for uh, entering passwords. For example, uh, using some special names or special secrets. But uh, this kind of thing is not um, available. By the way, uh, this is our Japanese text input system for the iPhone. And um, I made it. I was working at Apple for two years. and. Uh, uh, I was I created this um, Japanese text input system for iPhone, and, uh, and uh, tens of thousands of people in Japan are using this one. Uh, anyway, so the fundamental problem of the password system is that um, nobody can um, remember new information. Somebody may be able to remember, but I can't. So that means I cannot remember a new passwords, and. Um, some people say that there's a way to remember passwords, or if we use some images, then we can remember them. But I, I doubt that. Um, at least I cannot remember new information. Then, um, so um, I really don't believe that passwords, passwords can be remembered. So then the solution should be just um, simple. So we have to generate password instead of remembering password. And the generation of password should be done using some, something that we never lose. So we can use some fingerprints or we can use some old memories. So we may lose my fingerprints, but we may, may not uh, remember all memories if, um, if, if we, are, uh, we are not insane. So um, I think that. Um, Using the um, episodic memory is a logical consequence because there's a two facts that um, we have to use passwords. We have to um, use some passwords somehow, but we forget passwords. At least I forget all the passwords. Then the possible solution might be either use some special device or special um, something for remembering passwords, or um, just use something we never forget or we never lose. So, um, so, so the idea of um, FSPAS came out. So the idea here is that um, for remembering passwords, everybody is using episodic memories, which um, you never forget. But the idea here is that um, I list the um, candidate answers for um, some um, episodic episodes, and then. Just by selecting these um, right things, then the um, password is generated based on the uh, seed's character strings. So that's the um, very simple idea. But I think that this works. Okay. So um, let's um, see the demonstration again. So um, please, oop. this one. So now I have a lot of um, strange questions like this. Um, what was the number of the grandma's, grandma's phone? Or who beated me when I was young? Or well, that kind of stuff. And um, some questions are really uh, simple. Or some questions can be um, known by somebody else. But for example, this secret is not known by anybody. I hurt my leg when I was young, but um, and I it was so um, it hurts so much. So I remember where it was, but I didn't talk about it to even to my parents. So nobody knows where it was. So where it was. So uh, this is a real secret, and I will never talk about that because it's a so trivial incident. And if I select these answers, then this seed string is converted to pro, um, password string. Okay, so the idea is so simple. And um, but uh, selecting um, uh, using that system for generating passwords is a, a little bit not very, very easy. So I created a browser extension for uh, entering password much more easily. So uh, when I go to Amazon.com and want to sign in here, then I think this is very um, popular um, image um, you, you always see when you use Amazon.com. And I enter the email address of me. 
here. And usually you have to enter the password here. But when I click the password area, then I get the questions and answer candidates here uh, got from the episodepass.com. So when I answer all these questions, actually I have a lot of questions because this is a real one and I don't like to be hacked. And then the password, calculated password is entered here. And then when I try to sign in, then of course it, is, it doesn't <laughs> succeed. So, if, but if I um, enter, uh, I select all the right answers, then I can successfully um, uh, log into Amazon. Okay. And also I have um, Android applications like this. I have this um, Android applications, which looks a little bit different than the, the previous example, but actually the uh, database is the same, but the HTML is a little bit different, so I can do the same thing like this, and then I will eventually get uh, some, yeah, some string like this. So I have various versions of Epsopus application, and uh, you can use it on, the, on Android, or you can use it as a browser extension, or you can use it um, on the browser. Yep. Excuse me? Was that your real password? Yes, it is. You do know that this is being live streamed. Why don't I take a second? It is, to it is, it is, it is on the web. When you go to episodepass.com, no. you can see that. And it is open to the public for, for four years. I, I am showing only the answers and questions. And I, of course, do not show the answers, okay? So it, it, only when you know all the answers, oh, sorry about that, <laughs> sorry about that, but uh, only when you um, know all the answers, um, you can get my real password. So um, just uh, as I said, I have been using this for uh, four years. That's, um, that's, I, I have been dog fooding for four years. And um, the good thing is about, about this is that I've ne I have not uh, lost any passwords for four years. Okay, so um, of course I have brought new machines um, many times, but every time I buy a new machine, I go to that site and then log into Amazon and the browser will remember the Amazon password and that's it. So I have no problem um, remembering passwords so far. And um, all the information is on the web. So just as I said, all my password um, questions and answers are on the web and also the programs are on, the, on GitHub. So everything is um, on the web, that means um, I can search my password on Google, okay? If I go to Google and what is my password for Amazon, then I get the Epsopus page. That means that everything is open, but it's still pretty safe, I, I believe. I, I don't know if it's really safe. I'm in front of these uh, all the uh, hackers here, but uh, I, I'm feeling that uh, it is um, pretty safe, okay? And um, the best advantage for using this, pro uh, this program is that uh, I have to remember nothing. I don't even have to remember the master password because everything is um, based on my episodic memory and I don't really remember um, new stuff. It's only based on my episodic memory and that's all, okay? By the way, the um, password generation algorithm is um, written in JavaScript and uh, it's um, not really a very complicated one, but it's on the on GitHub, so I'll skip that. And um, so I don't think everybody believes how it works or believes that this is a good um, way to uh, manage password. So um, I'd like to um, talk about some possible problems of this system. So the first problem is, problem is might be that um, preparing the good questions and fake answers is not very easy. Actually, this is very, um, very interesting for me because I think about my old days and I think about um, uh, secret stuff and then I um, create the right answer and I prepare a lot of fake answers and list it in, as the, um, in, in Apes Pass. And that's very um, interesting for me, but many people complain that it is not 
very easy to um, create a good question and prepare good fake answers. So there are actually um, bad questions like this. So for example, if the data, the correct answer is on the net, then that should not be the right question. For example, if you have written some blog about some instant, and then, then you cannot make that into a um, pass question, okay? The, um, the next one is the, if the uh, experience is shared by somebody else, for example, if you go to some, somewhere with your family, then it's not a secret, so it cannot be a very good um, question. Also, um, um, this kind of um, question is not very good, like, what color do I like best? So this is based on your taste, but your taste will change. Actually, I was um, using a very old um, epistic memory-based um, question like, who did you like best when you were elementary school? But I could not remember that, or I actually changed my mind, or so uh, uh, sometime I, I, I liked that girl, but at, uh, other, <laughs> And later, I changed my taste, and then um, I liked some, some other girl better. So, so that kind of taste-based question is not very good. Also, if you do something secret, but you might talk about it when you are drunk, that kind of um, um, question is not very good. For example, if you have some affair with somebody, and you might talk about that when you are very, very drunk. So that kind of uh, uh, sp special um, um, special question is very bad, um, even when it's uh, episodic and um, you, you never forget it. So then what is the good answers? So I think the, um, these kind of uh, questions are very good. For example, um, trivial bad experiences might be a good candidate for good questions. So for example, uh, when, uh, when did I cut my leg uh, when I was, uh, where did, did I cut my leg when I was in, in elementary school? So this is a very, very trivial incident, and you will not talk about it um, when you grew up, but uh, you never forget it because it, um, it was a very good, uh, big experience for me. But, um, so this kind of um, experience can be a good uh, question. Or, uh, but the experience like, who hit me when I was six? Maybe you don't want to remember that, but you never talk about that. So that might be a good question. So another candidate might be um, uh, when you stole something, maybe you don't talk about it to somebody else. Then that might be a um, good um, exopass question. Of course, it's not a good memory, but uh, you can use it for a very secret question. Or, um, so uh, this kind of, uh, actually, not very good, but um, unforgettable instance might be good questions for this system. And um, the answer, I think, should be uh, proper noun names of lo uh, locations because you can create very easily the fake answers. For example, if the uh, right answer is um, the Frankfurt, um, then, then you can create a lot of, prepare a lot of fake answers like Bonn, Kelm, Essen, Koblenz, or whatever. Or if the answer is Bill, then you can prepare um, fake answers like Steve, Edward, or whatever. So um, creating a fake answer is very easy. The difficult part is um, finding a nice question, but that's not um, super difficult, okay? So another problem of the system might be, it's very easy to attack the system because every, everything is open. But uh, if um, you prepare uh, plenty number of answers and questions. Maybe um, it's not very easy to attack it even when it's offline. And online attacking is not, I think, possible because the um, service like Amazon will reject um, a lot of uh, requests from the from browsers. Okay. And uh, another um, possible attack might be asking a lot of people about that question. So actually, the questions like this is um, based on a lot of experience. For example, um, example uh, my experience when I was high school student or um, is, uh, ex experience when I was an elementary school student or very recent um, things is also included. But, but uh, the, um, you have, if you ask all of my um, friends about these questions, some people might be able to answer one of them. Then, 
it might be possible to um, get the right answers if you ask everybody I know. Actually, some of the um, answer, um, questions are only quite secret to me, so um, it's not possible to um, get all the right answers. Also, nobody will try to do that just to um, get my password, um, Facebook password. So, um, and the problem I said um, is that creating a good Christian is a touch, uh, difficult, but um, so I'm thinking about um, creating a support tool for creating good um, Christians. So um, the, the reason why people have difficulty um, right, um, creating good Christians is that they, uh, they believe that they forget everything, um, every, all the old things. But if I say, some, I say something like, um, did you have a strange, strange friend when you were in elementary school? Then he will remember something, and then he can make it as a special secret question. So there's a way to interview the people, the user, to create a good question. So I'm thinking about how we can create such support tools for Epsipos. And the other problem of using this system is that, so we have to um, answer all these um, 10 or 20 questions until <coughs> before I get the right um, password. So it takes time, that's true. But usually, the browsers will remember passwords for, of Amazon or Twitter or, or that kind of systems. And even when you log into some remote system, um, once you can log into some, some remote Unix machine, then you can use your um, um, uh, SSH data for logging into there again. So you have to use Epsos only once. So you can even use a very complicated passwords for remote Unix system. So um, for my four year experience, um, I actually don't use Epsos very often. Uh, I, I use Epsos only when I um, switch to other machine or I go, I go to some place where I, I've never been. So uh, actually, it is not, it seems to be a big problem, but actually it is not. Um, worst problem might be that the password leaks. So if somehow your um, password is known by somebody else, for example, if um, somebody knows my Amazon account, a Facebook account, and then you can check all these um, selection so that you can get the right password. This can be calculated by brute force, so that's a problem. So there's no way to prevent that, but if you have plenty number of questions and answer pairs, then um, even with brute force, the, um, finding the right answers should be difficult. And if you make everything secret, for example, um, the answers and uh, answers and then question pairs and the seed strings are um, secret, then you don't have to worry about that even when your Facebook password is known by somebody else. So at this moment, I am showing all these real data to, to the public because I'm believing that none of these passwords are, are open or known by somebody else. But I'm not sure. If I'm, um, one of the right passwords will, uh, will be uh, available to somebody, then I have to change all this stuff. So the conclusion might be that this is a really simple idea of creating, generating password from um, um, episodic memories using the questions and the answers. So I thought that is too trivial, but um, as long as I have checked um, systems or literatures, I could not find any system which generates password based on epistemic memories. And that's why I am here to present this system. Um, so if you know any system about, of, of this same idea, then um, this doesn't make any sense, but um, I have asked a lot of people uh, about in this, in this area of research, but. I haven't found anything like I'm very close to this one. So uh, if you have any information, please let me know. And um, I am quite happy with this system for, for four years. And at least this works pretty fine for me. So, uh, 
So um, I am quite satisfied with the system, but um, if you have strong questions, please give it to me now. Thank you.